Welcome um, everyone to this uh, last and uh, final session of ICCP 2020. Um, just before I, um, I start, can I just let people know that, uh, can you please choose a channel in the translation um, button, um, either English or Spanish, um, um, but not, not the off section so that you can have access um, to the language throughout um, um, this um, session. Um, and also, firstly, I'd like to um, acknowledge that uh, I am where I am sitting at this moment uh, on the land of the Banorong people um, of the of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to um, pay my respects to the elders, past, uh, present, and emerging, and also recognize that sovereignty was never uh, ceded. Um, it's been it's been an amazing journey these last few days. Um, so we've come to the end um, of a, a very uh, unique experience. I think the first uh, ever virtual ICCP, um, we didn't plan it that way, um, but it's ended up being um, the first um, of its of its kind. Um, um, with we, we're almost about to say thank yous, but um, I have invited a, a couple of people to make some and to offer some uh, remarks, just some reflections um, on their experience of this. Um, and I'll introduce them and they'll each have uh, make some comments and then I'll come back um, and make uh, my own remarks as chair of the conference. So our first um, uh, speaker is um, Samuel Kiest. Um, Sam is uh, literally uh, one of the co-organizers of, of this uh, of this con this conference. Um, he's multi-talented. Um, he's a community psychologist. He's a PhD candidate. He's a creative artist. He's a designer. <laughs> he, he does all sorts of, all sorts of things. So so Sam will make some remarks, and after that, <clears throat> we will have uh, Professor Jenny Sharples. Um, who is the head of clinical services at Victoria University and also the head of um, uh, the psychology discipline at Victoria University. So Jenny, uh, Jenny will be followed by Professor Irma Serrano Garcia, who probably doesn't need uh, much of an introduction because Irma has been at the heart of the ICCP movement um, since its inception in 2006 and was the chair, I think, the chair of the conference uh, that was held in Puerto Rico in um, 2006. Um, and then, of course, the chair, co-chair, uh, chair of the scientific co committee, Dr. Rachel Fox, uh, will offer her remarks. Um, so I'll invite Sam um, to offer some of his reflections um, on his experience of the ICCP and, uh, and in relation to our themes. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Chris. Um, I would also uh, like to acknowledge traditional owners of the land in which uh, I am coming to you from, uh, which is the Yulakit Willem clan of the Boonarong people. And I pay my respects to their elders past and present and sovereignty uh, that was never ceded. I'd also like to acknowledge that we are in a climate crisis uh, that is affecting people and communities already in severe and life-threatening ways, uh, many of whom are marginalised by global extractive capitalism. Um, as Chris said, my name is Sam, um, PhD student uh, at Victoria University, and I've had the great privilege of studying at Victoria University for around a decade, uh, and it was here in my undergraduate years that I was first made aware of community psychology. I remember so vividly the woman who stood to deliver her lectures in a quiet but methodical tone, glasses perched on the end of her nose, but with a fierce intent and a passion for this thing called community psychology. This was Julie Vandenide who stewarded community psychology at VU for many years. And she was the person who not only opened my world to a different way of thinking about psychologies and knowledge, but, came, uh, but became an unwavering support for many of us, both at VU and outside, who pursued a belief that psychological knowledge must be pluralistic, that it must challenge dominance and the status quo, or at least aim for that, and that it must aim for fairness, justice, and that it should be helpful, kind, and human. There have been many others during my journey of study, many here today, uh, that have been instrumental in uh, my coming to this broad and maybe sometimes slightly dysfunctional family we call community psychology. <laughs> I've been afforded perhaps too many privileges by my gender, my class and by whiteness that has enabled my pursuits in this broad field to be relatively unencumbered, but I am aware that for many this is not the same. 
But one thing that has never lost, uh, is never lost on me is the generosity of those who have surrounded me, both in academia, in organisations, in communities and at conferences. And I hope this has been evident through your experience of this conference. I mentioned generosity because I think it acknowledges two important sides of knowledge work, the shared human relational nature of how we are actually moved and healed by the stories people share with generosity, but also to point to the unpaid, unacknowledged and often exploited nature of this spirit. It's certainly not lost on any of us in this organising committee the time, effort and heart that many of you have put into being involved, attending and supporting the conference. I've been fortunate enough to attend two previous international uh, conferences, ICCPs or CIPCs, uh, first in Durban, South Africa and then Santiago, Chile. As many of you would know, while conferences are places of sharing knowledge, they are also places where we can reconnect with our conference friends and hopefully make new ones. This fostering of friendships during conferences is not simply to sustain us intellectually or to build utilitarian networks, but rather, I think, to borrow from a session yesterday, it sustains the beating heart in the knowledge work we do around the world. It fosters and sustains the possibilities of generosity, which in turn, I think, then builds the possibility <laughs> of networks reaching beyond disciplinary and or practice boundaries. These relational aspects underpinned by trust are what enable us to feel supported in doing unsettling work, in doing work in complex settings, in navigating new critical terrain. Before reflecting on just a few of the conference themes specifically, I would like to also acknowledge the vision, generosity uh, and work of Irma Serrano Garcia for being instrumental in establishing this conference and for sharing her wisdom and support during the two years that it has taken us to get here, so thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge Mundani Balak, the Indigenous Academic Unit at VU, who have provided us with uh, support in all manner of ways, uh, from institutional uh, and financial to extending invitations to their hot pot lunches, where a sh uh, relational space is made for friendship, laughter and stories within an institution. So thank you. Our constant conference themes were fulfilled in so many ways and for many panel sessions, they traversed all of them. Just to remind you of those uh, conference themes, they were knowledges for sustainable futures, creating inclusive cultures and healthy communities, working the boundaries, global, ex global dynamics in local expressions. Our first panel reminded us of the expanse of knowledge and the rich, diverse places and people it arises from. And that if indeed we are to move towards something like a sustainable future, those knowledges are integral. This was echoed in a presentation given to us by a group of Mayan activist researchers who traveled some distance to be able to give their findings live at our conference from their research, uh, looking at the depletion of vital jungle areas in uh, acts of not only ecological, but cultural violence. Many other presentations touched on this important understanding of the natural environment as ontological. Violence in many forms from epistemological to gender, to violent urban planning was also articulated at the conference as a barrier to creating inclusive cultures and communities, as a barrier to justice. Ermi and others spoke in our panel today of the need for work to bring counter narratives in order to halt the, uh, the kinds of institutional and epistemic violences enacted on people and communities. Uh, while Italian researchers spoke in their session of their amazing creative use of virtual reality technologies to bring an embodied experience of the impact of violence to perpetrators. On a, our second panel yesterday spoke at some length about the violence of capitalism in many forms, but also to the ways in which the dynamics of global capitalism is enacted in local ways, damaging people, communities and environments. And as suggested by Monica, and many others, the ways in which governments and governing maintain hierarchical structures that do the work of exclusion and oppression. Importantly, as suggested by David Fryer in his panel and in other presentations, even as community psychologists, we need to be alert and aware that we are not complicit in psychologies or psychological knowledge production that perpetuate, facilitate or ignore these violences. I will conclude by encouraging you to watch, uh, to continue and watch and engage with the conference material, which has been so generously offered by everybody. Uh, there are around 50 pre-recorded individual papers from around the world record in the recorded gallery on the platform. Uh, and if you have not been made aware already, uh, as attendees, you also have access to a very important documentary, uh, Indigenous film, In My Blood It Runs. 
Uh, it's an important film that charts the challenges of 10-year-old Dwan as he faces um, the overt and concealed prejudices, prejudices still perpetuated against Aboriginal people and First Australians in Australia today. In My Blood It Runs reveals the ways marginalised First Nations communities negotiate the colonial culture and keep their identities and cultures alive through self-determination, the re revitalisation of languages and cultural practices. Lastly, I do not have sufficient words uh, of thanks for the events team, <clears throat> um, who are the ones who have made the last minute turning of a large face-to-face -face organization conference into an online event, uh, which I can assure you has been a monumental effort. So thank you to uh, Emma and the team. I also want to thank my VU colleagues and friends and the other organizing committee members, um, especially Chris and Rachel. And to conclude, I hope you have all been able to enjoy share, foster and sustain friendships and solidarities over these few days and that they are able to extend well into the future. I hope that you have taken, as I have, from this eighth ICCP, the hope of radical relationships and radical possibilities for a community psychology and critical praxis. And I hope we may meet in person in Naples. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> have I been spotlighted again, Emma? <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Um, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to go straight on to, on to, I think it's Jenny, Jenny next. Jenny, um, would you share your uh, reflections, please? Thanks, Chris. I too would like to acknowledge the ancestors, elders and families of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional owners of our university land. Uh, and to acknowledge their ownership of the country, which has not been ceded, pay respect to culture and to elders past, present and future. Uh, my reflections may not be as erudite as Sam's, I feel. <laughs> uh, I, I have uh, more of a practitioner and activist uh, background and uh, evaluator research background, I suppose. So. Um, I wanted to start by thanking everyone and saying it's been such a rich and uh, provocative conference experience and many of the participants I've spoken to have uh, said that it's also been healing and uplifting and I've certainly uh, shared that those um, sentiments. It's been a difficult year globally for many reasons and I feel the conference has been really a nice point of renewal and, and hope. Uh, in our academic lives. <clears throat> it's been really impressive, the depth of experience that's been present in this, uh, in this virtual space. And uh, part of me rails against the virtual space because I really want to see all the little wrinkles in everyone's face and I, I don't want to be smoothed out by the, by the uh, Zoom connection. But on the other hand, uh, it's worked wonderfully and uh, I've really felt very strongly connected to the conference and uh, that's been very impressive from all the participants as well as the organisers. <clears throat> and the ability to record and have, have recordings available to us, I think is just such a wonderful gift of this unexpected <laughs> virtual way uh, of, of meeting. So that's, uh, that's one reflection that I'd like to make. I'm really looking forward to using that resource uh, in, in many ways uh, in, the, in the coming months. I think the conference has been really successful in joining us together across some of those boundaries that might exist between the research and practice and activism aspects of, uh, of our roles and perhaps our, our different positions in relation to those parts of community psychology. My reflections are really mostly on the theme of uh, fostering and maintaining inclusive and empowered communities and cultures which was one of the presentations to take <laughs> on, uh, on the, our original <laughs> conference theme. Uh, it's really been a joy to attend so many varied presentations and conversations and listen to the different iterations. Uh, particularly what struck me are ideas such as voicing, naming, conversing, affirming, resistance, and uh, thank you to Professor Dutta this morning for adding healing justice to my <clears throat> my list of uh, terms I'll be using in community psychology classes in the future. Uh, a lot of the symposiums involve people, I think, articulating and critiquing dominant narratives. And just this morning, I, I felt a bit of relief when Michelle uh, Fine spoke about challenging dominant lives. And uh, I think the conference reminds us of the solidarities that are required for us to keep looking 
uh, and keep conversing and keep collecting. Uh, many people have spoken about one of our roles as community psychologists being to hold a space and often to hold complexity in that space. Uh, and one of the reflections I wanted to share with you is that really shows me the importance of relationship in the research space. And I think that's come up a number of times across the conference uh, and the time required to both develop and maintain relationships with communities and also the time and energy required to reflect on our own positioning as researcher or practitioner in those spaces. And that in turn brings up one of the most important tools of reflexivity, which is one another and, uh, and our capacity to engage in our own communities and the importance of supporting each other and holding and caring for this academic community space. While we also maintain our own communities as participants, activists, practitioners and researchers. So I look forward to the future of, uh, of this wonderful conference space and the relationships made within it continuing so that we can hold and develop these spaces of inquiry, activism and healing uh, as a platform for us to continue transnational connect connections and build on this virtual connection capacity that uh, we've all developed a little bit further across these last few days. Thanks, Chris. Thank, thank you. Thanks for, the, for that, Jenny. Um, Okay, now I'm going to uh, ask um, er Irma um, to yes. share her thoughts. Thanks, Irma. Yes, um, good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I want to thank Chris for inviting me to deliver some reflections at the closing of this exciting conference. It's been a joy to work with you all during these two years. I speak to you from Puerto Rico, the land of the Taino Indians, whose ancestors I respect and recognize. I also acknowledge and honor the traditional owners and custodians of your land. I respect and recognize their ancestors, elders, and Aboriginal people present. Finally, I acknowledge the Kulin peoples as the traditional owners and custodians of Footscray, Melbourne, where the conference organizers and Victoria University are located. Before starting my reflections, I want to say that I am awed by the persistence and determination of the organizers of this conference during one of the hardest years the world has experienced. They managed to entice and challenge us to participate in this event, to contribute the best of our work and most of our collaborative skills to make this conference a success. I hope you, you will join me in congratulating them for their accomplishments. I will now share with you my thoughts, not only about this conference, but about international community psychology conferences in general. <laughs> I must acknowledge the contributions of various colleagues to the ideas I will present. Meg Bond, Chris Keyes, Blanco Ortiz, Tessania Velasquez, Lorna Torres, among others. Community psychology is a young discipline. However, as disciplines go, it has developed rapidly. This may be due to different factors, including a group of very active pioneers, its widespread initiation in different parts of the globe, and the availability of the internet as a means of communication and sharing. I venture to say that International Community Psychology Conferences, or ICPPs, have also played a significant role in the discipline's growth, its values, its theories, and practice. As most as you know, and Chris mentioned, international community psychology conferences began 14 and a half years ago. Similar to the start of many community efforts, they were initiated by a group of friends that had a good idea, which was picked up by a group of enthusiastic, hardworking community psychologists who gave it life in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The conferences have various characteristics, which I believe represent values and concepts of community psychology. Participation and diversity are at the forefront. These conferences are not housed in any particular organization. This was decided purposefully. The initial organizers wanted the conferences to respond to the interest, resources, and energy of community psychologists. 
We weren't even sure when we started whether there would be more than one conference. So we refrained from naming it the first ICCP. It has been fascinating to see how the event has literally taken on a life of its own. We have had eight conferences so far and have already confirmed sites for the next two. An average of 675 participants representing an average of 35 countries have attended these conferences which have traveled the globe, the Americas, Europe, Africa, and now Australia. Hopefully with the possibility of hosting virtual or hybrid events, the conferences can reach other corners of the world, including Asia, which we have not yet visited. There has also been diversity in attendees, since in addition to psychologists, students, practitioners, activists, indigenous peoples, and colleagues from other disciplines attend our conferences. Capacity building is another focus of our efforts. The conferences have contributed to this in many ways. Most conferences have had diverse and rich pre-conferences with skill building as well as practice-based workshops. Melbourne hosted two thought-provoking webinars. The content of the conferences has included the historical, ethical, and critical examination of multiple theories and concepts such as empowerment, violence, poverty, sense of community, and public policy. Burgeoning areas that were clearly evident in this conference include critical and liberation psychology, decoloniality, sustainability, racialized and gender oppression, and issues related to the pandemic and climate change. Conferences have also included rich work related to diverse research efforts, particularly participatory action research and qualitative methods. There have been numerous examples of creative and action-oriented intervention, as well as work by community psychologists from within government organizations and non-governmental entities. The incorporation of the arts in our practice and research has been present, but was highlighted here in Melbourne with sessions that included film, caricature, caricatures, poetry, drawing, theater, among others. Books and special issues of journals have been born at these events. There is already a call out for a special issue related to this conference. The proliferation of publications that have started to accept articles in various languages, such as the Global Journal of Community Psychology Practice, or entities that have translations on their websites, like the Community Toolbox, are influenced by contacts made in these conferences. Various community psychology organizations around the world have been enriched as a result of ICCPs. The Society for Community Research and Action in the US has seen more participants from other countries in its biennial meetings as a result of its participation and collaboration with our conferences. Recently, the European Community Psychology Association, ESCRA, have developed the new Bank for Community Ideas and Solutions, a global collaboration designed to promote community building and strengthen community life. This collaboration has facilit was facilitated by links developed in ICCPs, as was the birth of the Latin American Network for Education and Training in Community Psychology. Solidarities have also been fostered not only by our professional endeavors, but by our cultural and informal exchange. The variety and richness of cultural experiences in all forms of art, including dance and music, exhibits and film, are just one of the many ways in which we share who we are as nations, as a collective and as individuals. The time we spend talking at lunch on a park bench over a glass of wine, or more recently in a Zoom session, also nurture our solidarity by creating and maintaining personal and effective links that lead to collaboration and critical examination of our beliefs and ideas. This does not mean that there is no room for improvement. The conferences are still academically dominated, 
attempts to include more practitioners or activists as presenters or even as hosts must be strengthened. Formats continue to limit time for conversation and more and lengthier skill building sessions are needed. The structure of conferences should proactively promote joint projects and active exchange. The challenge of virtual conversation has to be met and conquered so that technology facilitates community building despite the lack of personal contact which we long for and are so used to. Last but not least, conferences have contributed towards creating a community of community psychologists. Participants have common interests and needs, and many before or after attending ICPPs feel a sense of belonging to a community. I have frequently heard people say that attending these conferences feels like coming home. There is also in this expression an emotional connection. I am certain that many of us have new friendships that have arisen in these events and continue when the conferences are over. Finally, we are a community that takes action in the face of poverty, homelessness, violence, illness, exploitation, and oppression. We need to strengthen this further by develop, developing more active ways to network and develop shared projects that will persist by developing ways to maintain our exchange alive between conferences and by finding other ways to facilitate empowering the vulnerable to promote well-being, equity, and social justice in our countries and around the world. In closing, I want again to congratulate our host and hope that we will all give them a strong round of virtual applause. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Irma, uh, for that um, contextual uh, historical detail um, that is so important uh, for people to, to hear um, as it contextualizes the growing uh, movement of community psychology, I think, and it's a, a way in which people spoke about this at the conference in South Africa about community psychology as a movement or ICCP is contributing to that as movement, which is, uh, which I think is a nice way to think about it. Um, so now, now I'd like to, to ask um, Rachel uh, to represent us in reflecting on what, what um, we've been uh, doing over this last uh, two years, maybe, yes. and also, <laughs> and also um, just thinking back uh, in terms of the conference itself. So, Rachel. Thank you, Chris. Yes, two years. Um, so first I'd like to acknowledge traditional peoples of Australian lands from which sovereignty was never ceded. And for me, my home and work happens on Wiradjuri Nation lands by the Murrumbidgee River. And I'd like to pay respect to the traditional owners and elders past, present and emerging. Um, so we began forming this conference a little bit more actually than two years ago. And it feels as though several decades of change have occurred um, over that time. We started to form the proposal for the conference before we traveled to Chile for the seventh ICCP towards the end of 2018. Right after that time, surges of political activism and protest swept through Chile and other South American countries. As at the same time, government violence and injustice deepened and events such as um, Brazil electing Bolsonaro occurred. And then 2019, I just have a list, you know, sort of American politics, Donald Trump, insanity of Brexit continued through 2019, Amazon rainforest fires, protests in Hong Kong. For all the evidence that authoritarianism is rising, millions of people continue to risk their lives to make governments responsive to their wishes. In the middle of 2019, we had over 350 abstract submissions to the conference. What struck us most about those conference submissions at the time was the extent to which they contained grassroots and activist works, which were, and many of them were presented here, um, promoted passionate just social justice work with peoples and were very inspiring, very powerful examples of work, 
which is undoubtedly finding ways to make a difference in the face of barriers and boundaries of governments, institutions and systems. So we had these great submissions and then 2020 hit. <laughs> so um, in January in Australia, the fires in Australia burnt an estimated 46 million acres. We also grieved the loss of an estimated 3 billion animals and some endangered species are believed to have been driven to extinction. The pandemic, of course, has since then dominated all our lives and sort of created a shared situation for humans of the entire planet, which somewhat feels um, in some way something that's happened for the first time. But importantly, a sharing which has not been shared equally in any manner. The injustices, violence and inequalities, violences and inequalities were already being experienced unequally. And so this pandemic deepened issues that were already present, caused a deepening of misery for many, and perhaps also made those issues more visible to privileged people than they were before, if anything else. The uprisings relating to Black Lives Matter and other political movements also grew this year. And that risking of lives to make governments responsive to people's needs feels very much alive right now. So we had to cancel the face-to-face -face version of this conference. And I know that many of you expressed to us how much you were looking forward to coming and to visiting Australia, and we would have loved to have received you. And uh, it certainly feels really surreal for me to be together with everybody, which always for me feels like breathing essential life-giving oxygen um, when we all come together like this. But at the same time to be sitting totally alone physically, it's very surreal. And I must say, I found it very um, emotional um, and as a British introvert I'm not really known for my emotion. <laughs> Having said that um, the privilege that comes with being able to travel to a conference and I think um, Irma described something similar the privilege that comes with being able to travel to a conference is thrown into question this year more than ever before. So we wanted when we decided to move online or we were forced to move online. We were forced to create an opportunity at the same time. We hoped for people to be able to attend that would not normally be able to attend. And we thought potentially it was in some small ways an opportunity to disrupt some of the problematic and excluding processes that come with holding a conference. So here we find ourselves all together, but all apart. The title of the conference, Fostering and Sustaining Solidarities, feels more important than ever. People who hold an interest in community psychology, in critical, decolonizing, feminist, many other ways of radically thinking and acting need to stick together. We can often find ourselves isolated in what we are trying to do. We might be one of few people, even relatively speaking, in our area, in whatever manner that might be, who are fighting to do things differently. That solidarity and sustaining of solidarity within nations or communities, but also internationally like this, is one of the essential ways that we can effectively resist. And we need to be constantly making space to carefully reflect on what it is we are resisting. Governments, institutions, systems do not serve the interests of human beings. The ways in which they perform this disservice also disproportionately affects certain groups, peoples and lands. Many of those groups, people and lands who we deeply care about. This disservice is not going to go away, not by election outcomes like the US, election outcome, not by pandemics. It is going to survive the pandemic and other changes we have seen this year. And I really liked something Ignacio Dobles said in panel two. So I quote Ignacio here. 
We might survive the pandemic, but so will capitalism, recharged and it can only be confronted in its exploitation, its extractivism, its colonialism, its economic market fundamentalism. And we really like, a lot of us say we really like this last bit, with imagination, organisation, some stubbornness and projects for social change. For me, the first panel we heard from on Wednesday, feels like a week ago, um, powerfully described resistances to and consequences of the disconnection from one another and disconnection from country, land, flora and fauna that those systems have encouraged. That grassroots and activist work that was submitted in 2019 and that I've seen so much of at this conference that I've just loved, notably also in the last panel today. And I, I wrote down at the time as I was listening, I liked the way Nuria described everybody as dissident women. I thought that was fantastic. Where panelists shared really inspiring work. Um, and that generally, you know, across the planet has been very visible this year globally is very inspiring, very powerful. And we need to share that activism and innovation with each other to learn valuable ways of resisting. I was also very inspired by the complex theorizing and critical thinking present in many presentations, again, notably in panel two. While action is absolutely vital to what needs to be done, that action will fail to really successfully dismantle unjust systems and fail to make transformative change without those critical understandings of how governments, institutions, systems, and also dominant ideologies, ideas and values are producing particular ways of experiencing our lives, our relating to one another and our relationships with land. That complicated critical thinking is really difficult and requires continual practice and is of course deliberately made very difficult to do by those systems that dominate our lives and our minds. That theorizing in our discipline is also fantastic and vital when it is led by knowledges such as indigenous and first nations knowledges, feminist knowledges, queer knowledges, southern global knowledges and many others that offer radical ways of thinking. We are all operating within systems and institutions that aim to discipline us, slow us down and make our work less radical and we need to be able to name and know ways in which they are achieving that. It was described I thought nicely by Monica in panel three as remaining vigilant. <clears throat> and I think Sam mentioned something similar. So we need to engage with all areas of our disciplines community with the really valuable complex theorizing that some are working on that shine strong light on the ways in which those systems are working against us and are influencing our own subjectivities and with the radical ways people are finding to act. Having these connections these solidarities between complex knowledges and radical actions are really vital to the work. In that sense, and with these solidarities, these solidarities across cultures and places as we come together and across knowledges and theories, community psychologists, and also the many other cousins of community psychology and friends who join us, to me, are, to me we are, you know, potentially some of the best placed people right now to respond to the global challenges that, that human beings face. Lastly, I'm very grateful to all the presenters who've taken part and put so much work into engaging in the conference. And I want to stress to people that the conference is in fact not over at all. Um, as Sam said, all this material is available until the end of December. Um, so the program that was the sessions have all been recorded. You can see them now on each of those pages. There's a discussion section um, and that's the same in the resources gallery. As Sam said, there's a whole wealth of 
open pre uh, papers, ignites and posters in that section. And again, there are discussion pages. And we've also got, um, we've started to discuss on the other platform called Slack, which has a more of a forum kind of space. We've also got that documentary, which is a fantastic um, documentary, I really recommend it. I personally feel now like I've kind of got this chocolate box to open in terms of all these live sessions that I wasn't able to make and the open presentations that are sitting waiting for me. And I am looking forward to putting on my headphones, heading out into my garden this weekend and just exploring all these fantastic works. So I encourage you to do the same and to offer um, comments, questions and discussions to each presenter. Um, and thank you very much. That's me. Thanks, Chris. Thank, uh, thank you, Rachel. Um, I'm going to claim your words as being on behalf of the conference organizing committee, of, of course, but um, I just have a couple of uh, pr procedural process things before we go on to uh, thinking about the, the handover that, that I'd like to do. And it might repeat some of what has been said. Um, so forgive me for, for being um, repetitive, <laughs> um, but it's just uh, as part of acknowledging um, the work of, of everyone and I can't name everyone, and I do apologize for, for not naming everyone. Um, we've got a list of people named on, on our site, but I just want to um, want to say a little bit about some of our journey that Rachel has described as well. So it has been a very powerful experience um, of community building for us, um, brought on by an extremely unsettling time for everyone um, globally. Um, we didn't know what we were going to get. Um, um, and we've had to build um, these sorts of boundaries. We had to get used to new technologies and a whole series of um, changes um, to our lives um, um, that, that that made us feel like we're not gonna have the conference. We are going to have it. We're going to have it next year. We're going to have it in 2022. <laughs> uh, we could never make a decision because uh, the pan pandemic just like a juggernaut kept growing, affecting different, different nations. So we literally planned two conferences, one that was face-to-face -face with the support of the APS events team, who was our original events group, with the support of Kath, uh, Mel, and Afina Reina, who had laid the foundations for the program that we were able to deliver today. So we really indebted to Afina for laying some of that foundation, but they couldn't do the work that was needed when, once we shifted to the virtual platform. Um, and so we had to reset um, and we had to think again, um, not knowing um, what we were going to do and not knowing what the platforms were going to be. So, so with this uncertainty, uh, our VU community um, and our VU events team in particular had brought an energy, a creativity and a sort of a vision um, led by Emma Scott and her team, um, Re Rebecca, Asha, Josh, um, I'm gonna miss someone, Eden, I think there's, <laughs> I think there's someone else. Emma, you'll have to say where he's <laughs> um, infused us with confidence that, well, look, we don't know what it's going to look like, but we're going to give it a go. Um, and we did. So we trialed it with two webinars. And these webinars were hugely successful in our view, both um, receiving over, two, over 400 registrants at, at a time. And we trialed with um, the plenary format. Um, and people really enjoy that. Hence, we, we, we try to have this dialogical space uh, and so forth. And that's how you saw these, pa these panels as, con as conversations. So also with Ignacio's words, um, with imagination, um, organization and stubbornness, we learned new things together and was able to cur curate this event um, that came to life in this virtual space uh, with your work, your passion, your commitment. Um, to foster and sustain solidarities. Um, and just to give you um, a, a sense of um, what we actually had. So we had 358 um, re registrations um, to the conference. We had 61 um, scheduled sessions, over 80 gallery presentations, 188 speakers from 25 different countries, including, and Irma, correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, our first paper from Russia, <laughs> so, so community psychology is reaching far around and, and across the globe. 
I believe this bodes well for community psychologies around the world. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more on the themes. People have captured a whole series of things, but I do want to say something that was really stirring for me yesterday when um, um, Auntie Lynn Thorpe, um, Claire Land and others spoke at a session um, um, talking about uh, talking about epistemic justice, um, representing the struggles of indigenous people and making powerful comments around um, aesthetic, uh, aesthetic interventions, but the centrality uh, and the urgency of the indigenous struggle in Australia for self-determination and, the, and the, the mammoth amount of work that we still need to do um, in order to support um, the project of indigenous self-determination. So that was vitally important for me and stood out um, amongst all of the amazing work that's, the, that's, happen, ap that's happening in different places that speaks to similar struggles, um, struggles for survival, struggles for justice. So I want to thank everyone uh, for coming and um, I'm happy now um, to take us um, into uh, the next part of this um, session. Um, and to invite uh, Professor Caterina Archidiocono and Professor Alicia Rodriguez um, from Naples and uh, from Montevideo uh, in Uruguay, respectively, who have ensured the future <laughs> of the next two ICCP conferences for hopefully 2022 um, in some format and 2024. So I'm going to pass over firstly to, um, to Caterina to make some comments and she's more than welcome to reflect on this conference and share a little bit about the vision that they have um, in Naples. And Alicia, I know for you it's four years ahead and so many things change as we in Melbourne have <laughs> I found out in a very short period of time, but I'm sure that you can share some of your ideas uh, for what it is that we have to look forward to in, um, in Montevideo. So Caterina, if you're not frozen, Emma, is she frozen? Uh, we're not sure right now. We've just asked her to unmute. Um, maybe we could go to Alicia first, if that's okay, while we try and get Katerina online. Okay. Um, Alicia, did, did you hear that? Would you mind going first? Because I think Kater Katerina's screen is frozen on us. So we're going to go in reverse order. We're looking way into the future and uh, we're going to ask uh, Alicia to share with us a little bit about um, how they imagine um, the conference uh, to be in Montevideo in 2024. Bueno. <clears throat> Buenos días, buenas tardes y buenas noches. Aquí en Uruguay es buenas noches. Eh, en primer lugar, eh, bueno, quiero felicitar a, a los organizadores de la, de la octava conferencia internacional de psicología comunitaria, sobre todo este, por el enorme desafío que, que implicó este, la reorganización de la conferencia, tal como, como le estaba diciendo Christopher en este momento, este, es, es admirable eh, los esfuerzos que tuvieron que hacer para, para cambiar los planes. Y bueno, y ya me adelanto también y, y felicito a, a quienes van a organizar la, la novena conferencia internacional de, de psicología comunitaria eh, para el 2022. Eh, a mí, personalmente, eh, me complace anunciar la realización de la décima conferencia internacional de psicología comunitaria para el año 2024. Es un poco extraño en estos tiempos realmente eh, prever qué es lo que pasará dentro de cuatro años. Eh, así que bueno, reciban este anuncio como lo que hoy deseamos que suceda dentro de cuatro años, pero qué sucederá realmente, este, ya lo veremos. La décima conferencia este, internacional de psicología comunitaria tendrá lugar en la Facultad de Psicología de la Universidad de la República de Uruguay. Eh, organizaremos este evento en conjunto 
con una diversidad de espacios académicos de nuestra universidad, eh, vinculados a la extensión universitaria, que tienen una amplia trayectoria eh, en el trabajo sociocomunitario y con los cuales la psicología comunitaria mantiene una relación estrecha. También buscaremos involucrar a las organizaciones sociales con las que trabajamos. Eh, eh, trabajaremos hacia, en este, en este tiempo, digamos, que queda, este, de aquí a cuatro años, trabajaremos en esta dirección. Dada la proximidad geográfica y las relaciones de amistad e intercambio académico que nos unen, estaremos trabajando en conjunto con colegas de Argentina y además con la Red Latinoamericana de Formación en Psicología Comunitaria. El título o el eje temático que nosotros elegimos para, para esta décima conferencia eh, es reinventar la vida en común, desafíos en la coyuntura sociopolítica actual. Si bien es un tema, es un título que fue pensado antes de esta pandemia, no nos cabe duda que la crisis del sistema capitalista desatada ya venía siendo una crisis, pero esta crisis profundizada, desatada con la pandemia, la devastación a nivel ambiental, social y político conducen a que este tema, la, la necesidad de reinventar la vida en común, eh, mantenga total vigencia hoy y seguramente en los próximos años. El ascenso de los partidos, de partidos políticos de derecha a los gobiernos de nuestra región y del mundo, ha relanzado la agenda neoliberal promoviendo recortes en derechos conquistados a lo largo de décadas. Junto con la profundización de las desigualdades sociales, asistimos al crecimiento de movimientos fascistas, xenófobos, misóginos, tal como estuvo planteado y expresado en las diferentes mesas de esta conferencia, que tienen impacto en las subjetividades y en la trama social. En este marco, en este contexto, ¿qué nuevas comprensiones es necesario construir acerca de lo común, de la diferencia y de la diversidad? ¿Qué papel adquiere lo comunitario y los procesos colectivos? ¿Cómo avanzar hacia un mundo sustentable? ¿Qué psicología comunitaria y para qué? ¿Qué nuevas preguntas nos formularemos de aquí a cuatro años? Esperemos que el evento permita optimizar la socialización de experiencias y reflexiones, los debates y la producción colectiva y generar procesos acumulativos de saberes, de afectos y de vínculos. Será para nosotros un placer recibirles, ojalá que sea en persona y que podamos tocarnos, abrazarnos en forma directa. Tenemos un video, no sé si lo comparto yo. Gracias. Oh, thank thank you for that, um, Alicia. And before we go on to uh, Katerina, I also have to just say a big thank you uh, to Serapis uh, from his company, Traducir es un arte. Um, Serapis, we really appreciate the work that you have done um, to allow us um, to be able to communicate across at least two languages here. So thank you very much for that. Um, 
can we now go to um, Katerina? You look like you've not frozen anymore. <laughs> I'm here now again. <laughs> okay, Katrina, over to you. Okay. So I'm pleased to be here and this uh, conference in uh, Melbourne is something very amazing, connecting generation, first of all, and connecting generation in and knowledges because technology was in this Melbourne conference, a very big tool to be connected. I am here to introduce the next conference in Naples on the 29th of June to the 2nd of July, 2022. It is closer than the 24, but because it is closer, it is much more in the uncertainty of the next time. We are now all of us trying to go out from this pandemic and we are united in our sufferance, in our unsafety, and we are united all around the world with dealing with the same problem. So we have social injustice, inequality, uh, power, overwhelming power over people and countries. But in this moment, we have this big uh, new event, a new world that collect all of us. And when we start with the title for the conference, we thought about community regeneration bonds and bridges among people and environment. And there is no more than in this moment, uh, a title that describe the moment where we are, we need for our survival as human being to reconnect all of us with the environment, with the higher, with the, uh, with the feeling of the simple existence of human being, being in the head, being in the environment. And to be safe as human being, we should be and create connection, relation, and interaction with the body, with the earth, with the rivers and the sea, and all the environment around us. So it is a big challenge to have this conference in 22 on the topics where human being is going to be connected with environment. And here probably, indigenous experience, traditional experience, sacred experience, old experience are giving us new, new tools, new perspective to be able to balance technologies in our life, to be able to balance the, say, the good things of the um, actual times, but this actual time are going to be rooted in the heart, are, go, are going to be rooted in the environment. And this is a challenge for community psychology, not to take care only of people of uh, exclusion, but of us in our environment. And there was, is no more, uh, no more, mm, there is nothing more than uh, the traditional old saying of Levine, of uh, Kelly, of all uh, our ancestors that are talking about the need of a global ecological perspective. And we need to introduce in our ecological perspective the physical and environment, not only the social environment, not only the relational environment. So we have in front of us a big challenge. I am not alone. I am Katerina Arcidiacono from Naples University Federico II, but in this conference, we collected together all the Italian university teaching psychology. We collect the ECPA, European Psychology Association, the Italian Association of Community Psychology, SIPCO, 
So we work together to prepare the program and we will go on to revise it after this last pandemic months. And we are going to revise it even after the uh, Melbourne, uh, the Victoria University experience, because I think that what happened in these days is something really new that bring new energy, new source to our uh, human being, but also to our, uh, to the creation of knowledge and connection. We are connected apart, but we are a strong global community. So I, first of all, I want to thank the um, committee that selected us and I hope that uh, we will be able to foster what uh, the mission they gave us. But I, I will, first of all, thank all the people that wrote us letters and Julian Rappaport and uh, and Chris Keys and and Isaac Prilenteski and our friend from Australia from South America and all around the world that gave us the energy to uh, take the the lead of this next experience that will see all of us join together dealing with new uh, challenges that human being is having in this moment. So uh, in Italy, me and Donata Francescato and Patrizia Meringolo and Elena Marta and Massimo Santinello and uh, Giacchino Lavanco and the Napolitan team with Fortuna Procentese and Imma Di Napoli and all our young students, Marcella and so on, they will be Florenza and so on, we will work together starting to create a national European Napolitan community able to host all of you. And I hope after this experience of Melbourne that we can try to start with some, some way of exchange before the conference so to arrive to a conference that will be our conference for all the participants. And I hope that Naples will be able to host all of you in the best way and we will be able to touch each other. But here we had in this moment a virtual touching, a virtual connection that was a very uh, food for our spirit, for our soul, for our politics, for our vision for our war. So thanks to Melbourne and, and thanks to Chris, to Rachel and to all of you. And I hope that we will we'll be able to go on with this tradition started with Irma and then on later all around the world in the last years. So thanks to all of you. And I hope that we will be able to go on uh, at the level and honor this tradition that collect community psychology all around the world. And uh, we have a short video that it is really a wishful thing for the future, a wishful thing to go over what uh, the situation, the pandemic situation we are now uh, involved. And so um, good luck to all of us and uh, I hope that you are able to give the, to introduce the video and um, I wait, we wait, all of us is waiting, all of you in Naples in 22. Questa è l'alba. Questa è la notte. Questi sono i sorrisi questa è la luce del tramonto questa è condivisione questa è la musica questo è il calore delle persone 
e un milione di persone questa è semplicemente Napoli We had a, a final picture that get lost that is that was a big uh, window looking to the town and it was the window and the door where we are going to enter into the town in the next ECCP 2022 with the email of the conference where we can start to have connection and to talk each other uh, accepting all suggestions, all ideas, all what we can receive to improve our next uh, conference, our next staying together. Thanks. Okay, with, with that, I think um, we have now come um, to the end of this, and I've just noticed that um, Heather Gridley had uh, made some other comments about the, the history, and um, thank you for that, Heather. I think people might be able to read those comments, and thank you also uh, for reminding us about Adrian, and uh, many many people you will uh, uh, remember Adrian, who's who's not been able to join us because he had surgery and is, uh, is recovering. And there's lots of others who've, who've since retired, Brian Bishop and others who were involved in the SCRA uh, conferences um, and so forth. But um, I think that brings us um, to the end of um, our, our time uh, together. Um, we are always sad when it comes to closures. Um, and we, I hope, I certainly do hope that we are able to see uh, each other. It has been amazing to go through the um, the papers that's in the uh, in the gallery um, to see Eduardo Almeida um, talk about his his career, his two careers, um, and that that's that's been that's been so enriching for me to revisit all of those and to hear them um, speak. So, so thank you, everyone. Um, it has been an epic journey, and um, it has been, as Jenny and others have said, it's been um, energizing, um, and we've definitely needed re-energizing. Um, in this time, and um, I wish you all well, um, wherever you are. You don't have to travel. Some wish you well getting from your desk to your bed, <laughs> from, <laughs> from, <laughs> from others <laughs> getting on and getting back to marking and all sorts of other things that will yeah, make you miss this conference uh, tremendously. So um, I take, we'll take our leave and, and um, say goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>